welcome back to my channel and welcome to February's episode of Year of Rex, which is a series that I'm doing where every month I get personalized book recommendations from one place, one source, in order to try and have my best reading year ever. One of my big goals this year is to have a 3.8 or higher average rating for the year, which I've never achieved. My <laughs> average rating every year is a 3.7. So that is the aim of the game this year. And the aim of this series is to hopefully, by getting personalized book recommendations, test out the different ways of getting book recommendations, but also try and have some really good books. And for today's episode, I am going to some of the people who I trust most, you. <laughs> I don't know, I just don't think this is like right for me. I don't wanna do it. I wanna go home. Like I can't take the pressure of it. But don't you think any job interview I put out a community post a little while ago asking you for book recommendations that you think I'm definitely gonna give five stars. Not necessarily your favorite book of all time, but books you really think I am going to give five stars. And I'm gonna pick some of them, I'm gonna pick three because we do three books for each episode in this, and I'm gonna read them, and we're gonna see how well can I trust you. No, if this doesn't go well, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna never trust you again, but I feel like out of anyone in the world, you guys should kind of know my reading taste the best, you know? Like, you watch me, like you see what I read, you see what I like, I feel like you'll know what I like the best. So shall we switch to me picking what we're gonna read for this vlog? Oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> let's go, let's find out what books you guys have recommended and see what we're gonna be reading. Okay, everyone, it's time to decide what books we're gonna be reading in this vlog. There's 216 comments. <laughs> How am I supposed to decide? I'm feeling so much pressure. Thank you all for taking the time to give me recommendations. I am gonna read through every single comment. I might, I probably won't show me reading through every single comment. I haven't read through them yet. We're gonna read through these together and we're gonna decide what three books I'm gonna be reading from your recommendations. I feel a lot of pressure because you guys have given me these amazing recommendations and then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I have to choose. I was thinking about how I wanna structure this and I've decided that I am going to, from you guys, take one recommendation of a book that is on my TBR that I own. Take one recommendation of a book I have never heard of. I have never heard of that book. Your recommendation is the first time I've ever heard of it. And I'm gonna take one recommendation of a book that I've heard of, but for whatever reason have not added to my TBR. So I've heard of it, but for whatever reason, maybe didn't think it was like super for me. The synopsis didn't super intrigue me, but your recommendation convinces me. Okay, shall we begin now? For the book that is on my TBR, I obviously, I haven't read through all of these, but I saw the comments, I got notifications for the comments coming up. There were two books that are on my TBR that you guys said a lot, a lot. I saw them a lot. So I think it's between, this is like the easiest choice. It's between these two. And they were, everyone in my family has killed someone and love theoretically. Now I literally just gave Ali Hazelwood another five star <laughs> with Check and Mate. So, I think we're gonna choose one of these two. Let's search, can I search? Um, okay, love theoretically there, love theoretically. Okay, no, actually only four people have said it. I thought more had said it, but apparently not. Oh, more people have said everyone in my family has killed someone. Everyone in my family has killed someone. The really cool who done it. I read it towards the start of the month and really think there's a good chance you'll love it. Oh gosh, so that's one, two, three, four, there's six people have said that one. So by the numbers, I should go with everyone in my family has killed someone. I'm just so scared. <laughs> I feel like, I feel absolutely petrified. I feel absolutely petrified at the thought of reading that book. Are you comfortable? I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah, I You should be. But I guess I should just do it. <laughs> Why does it make me feel so nervous? Okay, okay, we're... We're reading everyone in my family has killed someone. At the moment, I'm not looking forward to reading it because I just feel so much pressure. I feel so much pressure that I like have to love this book. I am so excited for it. <gasps> okay, so now we're looking for a book I've never heard of and a book I have heard of but isn't on my TBR. So it's sorted by top comments. So this is interesting because these are the ones that have um, got a lot of likes. Okay, Piranesi. Super lyrical and atmospheric and written, written as diary entries. Interesting, low plot, so many vibes, I think right up your alley. So I, I don't own Piranesi, but I have always been kind, like semi-intrigued by it. I think there's a few times I almost bought it. So that's a possibility. Oh, this one I have heard of, The Paper Man and Adrian, Other Short Stories by Ken Liu. There are different genres in this collection, but most of them deal with race, immigration, humanity, parental relationships, and even if you don't resonate with every story, it's incredibly thought of breaking and beautifully written. I've heard so many people talk about how much they love Ken Liu's writing. That is an option as well. One of my fave last year, 
The Spirit Bears Its Teeth by Andrew Joseph Wyatt. It transcends genres, has strong themes, and for an art YA book, it actually has me on edge. Mmm, okay, that's interesting. I haven't heard of that. The Feast by Margaret Kennedy. It's a classic British mystery with a unique premise. Wow. <laughs> Seven guests have perished, but brought this strange assembly for a moonlit feast. No, no, no. Oh, that sounds interesting. Wait, <laughs> am I like obsessed already? Interesting. Okay, we're gonna think about that one. That one kind of did get me a little bit. <laughs> but is picking a classic crazy? I just think she's very delusional and maybe possibly insane. Never Let Me Go, oh, I don't know if I'm down for that yet. I have heard of it, it's a book I've thought, obviously I've heard of it, it's a book I've thought of a lot. Questions what it means to be human in a profound, beautiful manner. Oh, Murder at Spindle Manor, haven't heard of this. It's a funny, Christy type luxury murder mystery set at a spooky haunted manor in a fantasy gaslit, what, what, wait, where monsters roam about outside and it's rainy all the time. The female MC is a monster hunter but gets roped in to do detective work. Did I mention the melodrama? <gasps> <laughs> this is so hard. You guys have given me so many good recommendations. A dead body, gunshots. I don't know if I'm, I'm still leaning towards that classic though, but that's absolutely diabolical of me. Brandon Sanderson will, will we're tackling Brandon Sanderson soon, but not yet. Or another Piranesi. And that's got a lot of likes as well. You guys really want me to read Piranesi. Uh, uh. Oh, this is how I use a time more is another one that I've been interested in, but haven't. Some people have recommended that to me. I can't get that classic out of my head. Let me look at its Goodreads rating. This is a problem. What's its Goodreads rating? 3.94, that's pretty high, especially for a classic. Oh, it does sound really interesting. Has anyone I'm friends with read it? Oh, I'll give it five stars. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's something about that that is sticking in my mind. I feel like I remember Oh, what is that book? I remember seeing a lot of comments come through about a book. Lonely Mirror? Lonely Castle in the Mirror. Let's see how many people have said that. Cause I feel like I remember seeing a lot of people say that. Lonely Castle in the Mirror. There's, there's quite, okay, there's like four people. It has some slow abyss, by no means I was bored and the book all over broke and healed me in so many ways. <gasps> I think you enjoy this one because of the magical and book related elements. I think based on the Wayward Children series, you might really connect with the kids and their stories. How it all unfolds is extraordinary in my opinion. Lonely Castle in the Mirror. It took me by surprise. I read it last year. I think it has a lot of elements you enjoy. Light portal fantasy with mystery elements and made me cry. So that would go in her dot. Oh. Okay, let me read through a few more comments, but I feel like in my brain, I'm kind of making my decision a little bit. Oh, there's loads of people. Oh, I found one of the Lonely Cast in the Mirror comments. There's loads of people seconding it. Oh my God, 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 oh my God. <laughs> Shit. Um, this is how you lose, oh, more people saying this is how you lose a time war. I think I've got to go with this classic for Never Heard Of. For some reason it's just like lodged itself in my brain and I can't, I can't get rid of it. So I know going with a classic is a little bit of a risk, guys, but I think I could love it. For the heard of, I'm gonna go through and read through all the comments quickly, BRB, and then I'll be back and then we'll make our final decision. <laughs> okay, I've come back. There were no more that like super jumped out at me. So other than people re-recommending ones we've already recommended. So with the heard of, I would say it's between Piranesi, This Is How You Lose a Time War and Lonely Castle in, in the Mirror. On the mirror? In the mirror? In the mirror. Um, Okay, it's not This Is How You Lose a Time War. It's Piranesi or Lonely Castle in the Mirror. Oh my God, I don't know. Oh, this has got loads of five stars as well. Holy shit. No, no. I'm choosing Lonely Castle in the Mirror. You guys can bang it to Wayward Children series with mystery elements making me cry. I think I'm gonna go for this. I think I'm gonna go for Lonely Castle in the Mirror. So our TBR is everyone in my family has killed someone, the feast, Lonely Castle in the Mirror for your guys' recommendations. <laughs> Why does this make you feel sick? Okay, I've been filming for 16 minutes. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this down into like, I'm probably gonna have to cut out a lot of me like reading through the ones I didn't you know, picking and deliberating. Just know I spent a lot of time <laughs> reading, also I stopped filming. Just know I've, I've been here for like 40 minutes because I like spent like 20 minutes reading through every comment. 
Um, I don't know how to edit this down, but uh, I will try. We have to cut out me deliberating a lot, but just know I read all the comments and deliberated a lot of them. I don't know what I'm gonna read first. I assume actually I'll probably start everyone in my family has killed someone today, which I don't like that. I don't like that. I feel like I want to build up to that, but I think I have to start that today. So yes, <laughs> I'll see you all in a bit once I've started reading. Okay, bye. Oh my God. Ah! days since I figured out what books I was gonna read and I could have started this straight away I've only started it today because I have been like doing everything in my power to avoid reading this book I am <laughs> petrified I'm scared I have been like paralyzed with fear <laughs> absolutely paralyzed with fear of what I'm gonna think of this book because I feel so much pressure because so many people have told me not just like in the comments of me asking for a book recommendation but like so many people have told me I'm gonna love this. And so many people who whose book recommendations I trust have loved this. I'm just like, I'm stressing out. <laughs> but I have started this evening and I've got 100 pages in. I set the mood, I got under my cozy blanket and I found this really cute, um, like bookstore cafe, cozy jazz ambiance, um, ambiance room, but like it's animated with Animal Crossing characters and it was so cute. I'll try and link it down below, but it really, I got the vibes going. So I'm 100 pages in. I'm still, I'm only feeling like I'm getting over that paralysis. Like I can't explain to you, even when I started reading it, I'm like, is this a five star? Is this a five star? Is this a five star? <laughs> There's not many books I have felt pressure like this. Do you know what I mean? There's not many books because when it's a book, for example, like The New Thursday Matter Club, yes, there's like, oh my God, I'm hoping I love that and it's a five star, but I know Rich Laws was writing star. I know the characters. When it's a Lucy Foley, like, you know, there's pressure, but I, I know I like Lucy Farley stuff. I'm just thinking of like other murder mystery authors that I enjoy. Whereas I've never read anything from Benjamin Stevenson. So with any new author, I find it takes me a little while to get used to the writing style. And I only just am feeling like I'm getting over that. But let me tell you the plot. So basically this is a very meta book where it opens up with the rules of a murder mystery, a quote from the detection club, which <laughs> love that as like a murder mystery author club that Agatha Christie was part of and then it opens up with our main character being like everyone in my family has killed someone murders are going to happen on the, the in this book on this pages here are the rules of murder mysteries I'm adhering to like it is so meta I I am obsessed like <laughs> it is perfect everything that we work for is right here right in this moment it is just amazing. It's so cool. And then basically he's telling us partly the stories of how people in his family have killed people, but also partly present day, there is a family reunion happening at like this ski resort and someone, a body is found. A body is found. That's what I'm gonna say. I am enjoying it. It's taken me a second to get into the writing style. I tried out the audiobook. I don't think the audiobook is for me. I don't think I'm vibing with the audiobook. So I've put that down for now. I'm just reading it physically. I love the metaness. I feel like I'm growing into the story now. And I feel like we've met all the cast of characters now. Really in the last chapter, we've only really met the, all the family. And it took me a while to like remember <laughs> all these people. Like, there's quite a lot of them. There's like one, two, three, four. There's like eight of them, but like they, I got them a little bit confused. Yeah, I'm getting over the fear now. I, honestly, I have nothing to say to you other than like this whole first 100 pages has been me making myself like jump that hurdle. Do any of you guys feel like this when it's a book you really think you're gonna love that it's like so, hard to read it's so difficult <laughs> i just did not want to do it but otherwise this video is never gonna happen so like i have to just get over it but i'm enjoying it now i'm just scared that the writing style isn't 100 percent 100 percent for me do you know what i mean like there's sometimes parts where i kind of read it and then i have to reread it just to like fully take in what happened but i mean i'm really enjoying it my ex expectations are just sky high my expectations are beyond realistic <laughs> So I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna continue reading tonight. It's like eight o'clock, I think. So I'm just gonna keep reading tonight and get as much read as I can. And in good news, our other two books for the vlog have arrived. Let me hold them up. How cute is that cover? I love it. The Feast. I'm really excited for this one. The Miniature Charm of a Baby Austin. What does that even mean? What does that have to do with anything, bitch? I really love the covers as well. I feel like they've both got like, they kind of like go well together. Anyways, also in even better news, this was my reward. I had to reward myself. I had to bribe myself to read a <laughs> hundred pages of this book. I was like, right, Megan, you're gonna film once you've hit. I haven't really hit page 100, I've hit page 98, but like, you know, close enough. I had to bribe myself. And so I've got two book parcels I haven't opened. One I think is a gift from my Amazon wishlist from you guys. And one is, oh, one is a publisher. 
uh, a publisher has sent me a book. So I know what this is, but I need to look at it more closely, you guys, but I don't know what this is. So we're gonna open it together. This was my reward. I've been so excited all day to open these and I did not allow myself to open until I could check in with you. So let's see what this is. Ah! Oh my God, is there a note? I have had it officially. I've had it up to here. What is it with me living? I've never had this problem like this before where back when I was living at home in Essex of there not being Amazon notes. But since I've been here in Wales, like over half of the packages you guys have sent me, I hasn't had a note in it. But thank you so much to whoever got me a wizard's guide to defensive baking by T. Kingfisher. I think this is gonna be five stars for me. This is one of T. Kingfisher's cozy fantasy ones. Just the font, just the cover. Excuse me, look at the gingerbread man without a sword. I think maybe this one is like young adult or middle grade as well. We've got Mona, who's familiar is a sourdough starter and her magic only works on bread. Oh my God. And the, a dead body is found on the bakery floor. An assassin is stalking the streets of Mona City, preying on magic folk. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Olivia Wild nod at the end of the day, right? Olivia Wild nod. I am so excited to read this. Thank you to whoever gave this to me. I am still looking for a T. Kingfisher five star. Could this be it? We've had like multiple 4.5 stars, I think, but no five star yet. Okay, and then let's open this parcel from a publisher. Oh my gosh, there's loads of things. What the hell is that? There's a little chocolate. <laughs> it's chocolate. Oh, we've got the book and it's in a ribbon. Okay, so this book, this is an arc I've been sent. Oh my goodness. Cozy crime is dead, so is Lucy Haig. This is an arc of all the hidden monsters, a grisly murder, a detective warlock with a dangerous past, a girl out of her depths. Can they solve the case? Sage is an ordinary girl and a werewolf moving between worlds, desperate to make sense of her life. When her supernatural friend Lucy is found murdered in the human domain, Sage is determined to be part of the investigation headed up by the attractive but arrogant warlock, Orin Rin... Rinalis. Rinalis? Sage is neither magical nor immortal, but she knows right from wrong and can scent a killer like no other. Oh, fun. So this is like a YA fantasy murder mystery. I'm really excited to give this one a go. And there's also gonna be a romance in it. Okay, I'm really excited. There's also other stuff in here. Oh, we got a bookmark. I actually need a bookmark because I've lost the one I bought here in Wales. <laughs> We've got an author's letter as well. It's a modern take on traditional murder mystery. Don't need to tell me twice. <laughs> oh. Get out, we've got a case file with one of these backs to it. <laughs> they know me, it's almost like they know me. <gasps> Get out! Oh my God, I don't know if I should be looking at this. There's like victim case files with photo. Oh my God, how cool is this? What is going on? And it's like descriptions of them. This is, inc this is impeccable. This may be like one of the best like publisher scent boxes I've ever received. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're having a laugh. Guys. You sent me fudge. Finally, a giant rat has been awarded a gold medal. If you don't know me, fudge, I don't know why I'm whispering. This feels like a very intimate moment. Fudge is my favorite thing in the world. Fudge is my favorite food on this earth. Oh my goodness. <gasps> this is crazy. And we've got a newspaper article. So, that's too many S's. I had to go to speech therapy from S's when I was a kid. I couldn't say S's, okay. Let me try. <laughs> Silver serial killer strikes again. Oh my God, this is so cool. When does this book come out? So I can tell you guys about it. Also, there's more chocolates. They know me. So this book comes out in May, so I'll definitely try and read it before that. But oh my goodness, guys, I'm just thinking about the fudge. Can you believe it? This is so exciting. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go cozy up, probably eat some of my fudge, very kindly sent to me by Chicken House. Thank you so much. I'll leave a link to all the Hidden Monsters, like Waterstones page or something down below. I'm very excited to read this. And thank you so much for this very kind package. This is like, like I said, one of the best packages I've ever received. So I'm gonna go cozy up and I will let you know. We're going for a walk tomorrow. I don't know if I'll see you before then, but um, I'll let you know when I've read some more of everyone in my family has killed someone and what I thought.
okie dokie, we went for our walk yesterday. I don't know what clips we got of it. Well, I remember on one part, we were on this boggy part, we'd gotten lost and we were like, we have to just walk this way because we know that's the vague direction of where we were parked is. And I thought I was gonna die. And Tom starts filming me. He's like, it's so picturesque. And I'm like, fucking, if you, if you don't stop filming right now, I'm going to murder you. I'm going to murder you. So that's like murder you saw in my eyes there. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. I'm now 250 pages into Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. I'm I'm enjoying it, but I, I at the moment don't feel like it's gonna be a five star. But I'm gonna say it's not without, it's not out of the realm of possibility. It's not impossible that I guess, because I can't even speak. I'm overwhelmed. This book makes me feel very overwhelmed. <laughs> It's not out of the realm of possibility. It could get a five star depending on how this ends. I've I've discovered what the problem is. The writing style is not 100% for me. In that kind of non, the way you can't pin down, where you're just like, I'm not e reading this easily. I'm not falling into this book. Like there is a bit of friction between me and the writing style. So that's not me saying the writing style is bad. There's certain writing styles we all vibe with and there's certain writing styles we don't all vibe with. I've spoken about this a hundred times, but writing style is the first barrier <laughs> to me enjoying a book. So even if I can say the plot in this is, Five star potential, the meta-ness, the kind of taking apart and breaking the murder mystery genre is absolutely five star potential. If I'm not easily, it's not like I'm not enjoying the writing style, I'm finding it frictious. I'm finding it difficult. I'm finding it difficult to read at times. I'm not finding like I, I read it smoothly. Does that make sense? And so that is causing a bit of friction between me and the book, but I am still really enjoying it. I'm loving, and I knew I'd love it. I'd lo I'm loving the meta-ness of it. Like the way we know on what pages murders occur and he like reminds us of it. He's like, girly, remember a murder's gonna happen in three pages? We're like, oh, you know? Or there's this thing about a plot hole that he said at the start. And there was a point in the book I was kind of like feeling like things weren't making sense. I was like, this isn't all adding up. And I was feeling a little bit confused, but then a couple pages later, he was like, you might have remembered I said there was a plot hole that I could drive a truck through. That was in the last section. So even though I don't know what the plot hole was, my spidey senses were tingling that something wasn't right here, but now I know it's what the book's for. It was like intentional. I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm gonna continue on with this series, I already know, but it's, I, I, there's something about the writing style that just me and it aren't getting along. We're not besties, do you know what I mean? And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying for me personally, we're not vibing. So I'm definitely gonna try and finish this tonight and probably start our next book tonight as well. I've got like 120 pages left, so I am just gonna cozy on up and try and finish this now and I'll let you know my thoughts when I'm done. Okay, I've gotta be honest. <laughs> I think this is a 3.5 for me. And that makes me so sad to say. I feel completely crushed right now. I wanna cry. <laughs> this was such an anticipated release for me. And it's gonna be a 3.5. I'm really disappointed in this. And now here's the thing, a 3.5 is not a terrible rating, but I obviously I'm gonna be talking about it through my disappointed lens. The real issue for me here is the writing. I don't think there's an issue with the plot. I don't think there's an issue with the characters. I don't think there's an issue with the murder mystery. I don't think there's an issue with the meta-ness. What is going on with this hair, by the way? Can you calm down? Yeah, I don't think there's an issue with any of that. There's just something about the writing that didn't work for me. And not the parts where he's being humorous or like playing into the meta-ness of it. I liked the humor. I liked the meta-ness. It was the bits in between that didn't do it for me. It just felt clunky. It felt like it was stumbling over itself. I don't know how to explain it, but there's just certain writing styles that just don't, it needs to flow smoothly. That is the first port of call for me. I know it's not for everyone. I've spoken about this so many times where I think there's writing plot and characters and they all fall on different orders for us in terms of what is important. And I'm not saying for me, the writing is like the thing I'm looking out for the most, but I think it is the thing that um, impacts my enjoyment of a book almost if I don't vibe with the writing style. So that was really the problem with this. And it also it reminded me a lot of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle with, by Stuart Turton, which I think I gave like a three similarly, which is another very meta murder mystery. And I think this is a trap some of these fall into where they get a bit too like clever for themselves. Like there were just moments in this where I felt like, okay, you're you're trying to do too many layers here that it's not quite working. You're getting a bit too clever. You're getting a bit too convoluted for the reader. But that does make me feel positive because I know then that's not a death sentence for a book for me. I gave the Seven Deaths of the Hardcastle like a three, but then I gave Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton a five. So like, 
you know, <laughs> that's a positive correlation that we can hope to get. But yeah, I liked the reveal. I liked, I'm gonna continue with the series. I am gonna add this to my series spreadsheet, my first series I'm continuing so far this year, but it's a tentative one where if I don't like the second one, I probably won't continue. But I liked this. I enjoyed elements of it, but it took me too long to read. I just, the writing and me were just like, we were butting heads. Do you know what I mean? We weren't getting along. So I'm so sad. I really thought I was gonna love this. I really thought I was gonna love this. Alas, I'm gonna start this evening. I'm gonna read as much as I can of Lonely Castle in the Mirror to break up the two murder mysteries that we have. So I'm gonna get into this one. I don't really know what to expect from this other than you guys said it's kind of magical realism-y and it's gonna make me cry. And there's like kids at a school, I think, or like it's about some young children. I'm really excited. I'll check in with you when I'm about halfway through because I think this is one where I'm gonna have to have some time to figure out what I'm thinking of it. But I love the cover and I think this is something a little bit different for me. It feels like something based on what you guys have said, based on things I already enjoy, but like pushing me out of my comfort zone a little bit. So I'll chat with you tomorrow morning when I'm hopefully a little bit of the ways through, but I'm very excited. I'm very excited to begin this. I'm gonna dive into it this evening and see what I think. Okay, I'm halfway through Lonely Castle in the Mirror and I'm enjoying it, but I'm not loving it. Oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned. You guys should know me better than anyone. This should be three five stars. This should be three five stars. No, I like I, I like the book. I like the book. I'm saying I don't like us not getting three five stars because I don't think this is going to be a five star either. I mean, there is the element of I chose from your suggestions, but I tried to pick suggestions. I mean, the feast only one of you said, but these other ones quite a few of you said, and it's okay. <laughs> so basically, you've got these seven children who go through mirrors. We're following one in particular. What's her name? I've forgotten her name. I'm so sorry. Kokoro. We're following Kokoro in particular, but there's seven children who've gone through mirrors in their rooms to this castle in the mirror where they get to live for a year. And there's this wolf queen who's like this little child with a wolf mask on who tells them that if they find the secret key, they a wish of theirs can be granted and then the castle will close. But they've all kind of decided not to look for the key and it's more them going there every day and getting to know each other. And Kokoro doesn't go to school. She's got a lot of trauma around being bullied at school. And so she's kind of like, she hasn't gone to school for a long time and she's got a lot of fear around that. And we're getting to know these kids and they've all got issues. They've all got things that they're struggling with and the story is that kind of getting to know them. Now, here's the thing. I am enjoying the writing. I am enjoying the writing. I think it's so interesting. This is translated from Japanese. And I think it's so interesting how different, how how the cadence that different languages have and the writing styles that different languages have. Oh, the sun is really doing me a favor right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> when they're translated into English, I was speaking about in my series, a uh, series I need to finish video that I posted the other week, how I really like the way that Swedish is translated or the kind of inherent writing style that sweet, the Swedish language has when it's translated to English. Obviously doesn't, different authors have different writing styles, but I do think there's, a, there's certain similarities when translators translate the books. And I think Japanese definitely has a writing style where it's kind of like a little bit detached. Although that's a bad thing. I think it's, I often enjoy that writing style. It's a little bit detached. It's a little bit um, more matter of fact. It doesn't often like have as many descriptors as some other languages uh, or like flowery language. It's more to the point. There's moments where I think this writing is really beautiful. And there's moments where I feel like the detachedness is hampering me from getting more attached to these characters. Does that make sense? I mean, some of my favorite books, like The Traveling Cat Chronicles is one of my favorite books, and that's translated from Japanese. But there's just something about the way that this book is told, where there's like no plot. <laughs> and I can tell we're gearing up to an emotional ending, but it doesn't, Traveling Cat Chronicles, I felt like emotionally attached throughout the whole thing. This, I feel like it's just the ending's gonna make me cry. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna cry at this book, but like, you know, I cry, I, you know, it's not hard to make me cry if that's what your intention is. But there are elements of it that I'm really enjoying. I'm really enjoying following Kokoro. I'm really enjoying the characters I'm meeting. I'm really enjoying the weirdness of it, like the kind of weird setting that we're in. But there is no plot. And I don't know if I'm attached to the characters enough 
to care about that. But I am really enjoying it. I can see why so many people have loved it, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it maybe strong. I'm enjoying it. But I also don't feel excited to pick it up, right? When I've read some books this year that I've really enjoyed, I feel excited to read them. This feels like a chore. It feels like work, you know, <laughs> to get this video up. I'm not like reading this. I'm like, wow, like this is really doing it for me, you know? But I think I've figured out at this halfway mark, I think you kind of are meant to figure out what's going on here. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but- I've connected them. So, I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> the feast better fucking pull out the stops. Because remember, in order to be deemed a success, this vlog has to have an average rating of 3.8. And I think the feast is gonna have to get quite a high rating in order for that to happen. Because this is feeling again like a 3.5. So, yes. <laughs> it would have to get a 4.5 or a 5, the feast. If that is the rating I give this, we'll see, we'll see. It could be higher, it could be lower. We'll see, but I'll check in with you once I've finished it. I'm just gonna knuckle down and try and read it all. But right now it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> right, I have to make a confession. I'm giving this three stars. <laughs> I just really don't know how much more I can take. <laughs> I have taken the brunt of so much. Please don't be mad. Please don't be mad. This just didn't do it for me in the way it seems to have done it for so many people. I did not cry. I will say I think the last third is the strongest part of the book. But by that point, I was just disconnected. Like I love what it does. I love what this is saying about mental health in children, particularly in Japan. I think it's very relevant to society in Japan. There's kind of an author's note about that at the end. And that means I think this is an incredibly important book to be written. And I think it's probably opening up a lot of really important discussions. But as a book for my personal enjoyment, it's a three. I am so, guys, what is happening? So far the videos I've done this year that aren't like Year of Rex where I'm really trying to get my best books have been the ones where I've done better rating wise. Ha, <sighs> oh dear. Obviously a lot of people have loved this book, right? So many of you recommended this, so many people have enjoyed this. So like, I think I would still recommend it to you guys to try out, but it just wasn't for me. The kind of slow, I think at first I love a slow no plot book, but I have to love the writing and I just did not love the writing in this. I'm so sorry. I don't really want to talk about it. I don't really want to talk about it. It's just a three. I, I can understand what it's doing and I can admire it. I think if this was a novella, it could have been a four star, maybe even higher. Like genuinely, I think it is how long it is. And that last third is really the strongest part. You really don't need a ton of the rest of the book. Like it does, it goes around in circles and tells us like very much the same things again and again. And it's so slow. I think if this had been 150 pages shorter, I would have enjoyed it so much more personally. I think, yeah, I think it needed to be shorter for my personal enjoyment, but, so many people enjoyed it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't have anything else to say to you. I'm just really sad and embarrassed that I haven't loved this. Like I'm, I'm really, and I'm sad about this video. Like you guys shouldn't be better than anyone. What, what's going on? <laughs> also, sorry. I know I've cut this in awkwardly, but I'm just about to go live and do the games night with my patrons. Oh, can you focus? Thank you. But did anyone else know from the halfway mark exactly what the big twist was? Cause I did like exactly. And I think we should have that conversation. And I read some, I read quite a lot of reviews. I thought it was like obvious, like everyone would know what the big twist was, like that you kind of know reading it. But loads of people were like, oh, I had no idea what. <laughs> the twist kept me guessing until the last moment. I think it's incredibly obvious from the chapter, the last chapter I'd read and I checked in with you for the first time, I knew what the twist was. So that kind of affected my enjoyment as well. Like it wasn't a surprise. So I didn't feel on the edge of my seat to continue reading. Anyways. Okay, and now we have to get into the last book, which is one only one of you had recommended to me from what I can see. And uh, I'd never heard of before. So really we've gone down in chances. Have you ever watched Pointless? Those of you who watch Pointless, which is the show that I first got introdu introduced Richard Osman to, because he was like the expert on it, because he's very clever. In the final round, they have like a category that they, this is a very much tangent, but in the final round they have a category where they have to try and find a pointless answer. If you have not seen Pointless, they've asked a hundred people, they've given a hundred people a hundred seconds to name, and then it's like, 
footballers who played in this World Cup final or something, whatever. And you're looking for the answer that no one said. <laughs> and like in in the final round, they they say, okay, which which answer do you think is most likely to be pointless? And they put that at the at the end, right? And then they like they go up in most likely, right? So they start with the ones that's least likely. I've flipped on his head. So I started with the one that was most likely to be a five star. Then this one, because I'd heard of it and a lot of you recommended it. And now we're like down to the least likely to be a five star or like even anything above a 3.5. <laughs> and um, we need it, we need it. This is essential, this is a crisis. I've got a, I've got a uh, game tonight with my patrons in like 20 minutes. So I'm gonna start the audiobook before that and just start to get the initial vibes and then hopefully get about halfway through tonight and check in with you first thing in the morning. But I'm a little bit concerned. <laughs> right, I'll see you in the morning. Everyone, please cross your fingers, your toes, that uh, I enjoy this book. How has this happened? You guys need to answer for your crimes. <laughs> I know I was in a similar filming situ yesterday, but uh, just, the idea of taking all my camera equipment downstairs was too much. I've been lying there for like 30 minutes trying to make myself do it when I should just film and talk to you. I feel like I'm coming down with something. I'm feeling very burnt out. <laughs> I don't know, no, burnout isn't the right thing. I get like often pains in my neck or my glands when I'm kind of like overtired and that's just how I'm feeling. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes I haven't really spoken to you about um, in life. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about this. I'm halfway through the feast. It's okay. Oh, no, I don't wanna even upload this video. Can I like redo it? Can I pick three other books and like pretend this never existed? It's been the worst week of my life, actually. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Problem. Because it's fine it's probably gonna be somewhere between a three and a four again. Like a three or a 3.5, maybe a four if it picks up, but it's okay. Listen, I'm reading a classic, which is something. <laughs> so basically the first chapter, we find out that this hotel by the seaside on the Cornish cliffs fell into the sea. And I think there's at least seven bodies trapped underneath the sea, underneath all the rubble, basically. And then we go back in time and we're kind of going through each day, I think in the week leading up to the hotel falling into sea, meeting these characters. And we've been told that like, it talks about in the opening, how each of the characters, I think who end up falling into the sea are representing one of the seven deadly sins. And so the mystery is kind of figuring out who is gonna end up being the people who fall into the sea, who is gonna end up being what deadly sin, and what have you. And it's fine. It's reminded me of some other stuff I've read. Sometimes Christy does this to a lesser degree, but like there's certain stuff in classics and books of this era where like it doesn't have the same hook that a lot of our mysteries now do. Even Christy would sometimes do this. Like you'd have like the, it would sometimes take you a while <laughs> to get round to the hook. The hook wouldn't be at the beginning. And so I'm halfway through and I'm just feeling a little bit meandering. I'm enjoying the writing. I think it's got a very funny, witty style of writing that is very also poignant for the kind of characters that still exist today with this being written like, what, 70 years ago. It has a certain charm to it, but I think it's different than what I expected. When I read the synopsis, I thought it was gonna be much more mystery. It's much more classic with like a hint of mystery. Do you understand what I'm saying? I was really excited for this one. Like I saw it and I was like, absolutely, I'm reading that. But I just don't know if I care. Oh, I'm so upset, I don't wanna talk about it. Let me pretend I care. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, I don't know if I care about what's happening and what happens. Okay, I don't have many opinions. I'm gonna go finish it. And hopefully, because I'm fed up of this vlog where you guys are some of the people I trust the most not being successful. <laughs> I feel like it's my fault. I'm feeling guilt over <laughs> the books that I chose. Um, but hopefully if I finish it, I will have different things to say. So I'm gonna try and finish it maybe this evening, maybe tomorrow morning. 
And yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. But everyone, fingers crossed that it, it starts to pick up a bit. Hey friends, I finished The Feast by Margaret Kennedy and I'm gonna be giving this a 3.5. There was a lot that I admired about this, right? I think by the end, the story that it's told and the kind of cast of characters it's portrayed and their stories that have been told is very effective. And kind of the idea of the seven deadly sins by the end, it does really all come together. I was just a bit bored. <laughs> it's the trophy. This should not be classed as a mystery. This is like a, a classic. I wouldn't say it has a, a particular genre. It's more like literary classic with a hint of a mystery to it. As an objective book, I can say, I think this is a good classic, right? I think the writing is witty, it's fun. I think the cast of characters, by the time I got to know all of them, I think I got cast characters. There was a few too many, I think. There was a few children, I was like, who are you? <laughs> like when they're mentioned, that didn't need to be part of the story. There's a few too many characters. We could have whittled it down a bit because it's not just the seven who pass away in the hotel when the hotel collapses. It's like loads more, <laughs> there's so many characters. So I think there is a bit too many, but yeah, I can admire what this book does. I was just bored reading it. And a part of that is maybe like, you know, I'm not the biggest classics reader. I, but I don't know if that is it. <laughs> I don't know if that is it. So on the back it compares it to Jane Austen. Don't see that, sorry. And then on the Faber website who publishes this, it says perfect for Agatha Christie fans with a dash of Richard Osman. <laughs> That is not correct. I don't see that comparison. I can see the, the Christie comparison, but it's like the Christie, the parts of Christie I don't really enjoy as much. It's it's like, it's from the same era. I feel like that's really the only, the only similarity. And there's certain, I guess, conventions of books that existed then that don't exist now that feel a bit different to us. And thus we think it's like the style of the author, but really it's the style of the period. So I can see the comparisons there, but yeah, I can objectively say, I think this is a good book. But, and I enjoyed it by the end. I was like, okay, yeah, but am I gonna remember this? No. Am I gonna think about this by the end of the year? No. Am I gonna, you know, <laughs> have any lasting attachment to this book? No. So at the end of this vlog, having read these three books, that means that your episode, your guys' episode of Year of Rex, has an average rating of 3.33, which does put you at the top of the leaderboard. That is better than what <laughs> paying a professional got me. But alas, it's not deemed a success because you have to get a 3.8 or above to be deemed a success in terms of the goals of this vlog. I don't know what happened, guys. Did I pick the wrong books? Is it on me? I tried to pick ones that were popular. I mean, this one only one person said. But these two were popular. A lot of you guys recommended them. So I don't know what went wrong. <laughs> My fault, I wanna take responsibility. But I do wanna thank you guys for all your recommendations. I'm sure there were many a five star amongst the list. I just did not end up picking them. But let me know if there were any that you thought I should have picked. Should I have picked Piranesi instead? Should I have picked Love Theoretically instead? Maybe this whole vlog would be entirely different if I made those choices. But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching this vlog. I hope it wasn't too painful. Um, don't worry, I still love you, <laughs> even though this has happened. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye!